Moving on to the graceful interior. Yes, that's very much sarcasm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of the Spoken Wheel Show. I'm Derek. I'm Joey. And now let's jump in to luxury cars. The Lucid Air EV has finally begun production. Lucid is a new car company, and their first model is called the Air. Very interesting, very interesting, because Lucid Air, you know, you know, words are very strange these days. How do they have any connection, though? I don't know. I have to look this up. What does Lucid mean? So according to Car and Driver, uh, and I quote from their article about the Lucid Air, the first model from startup Lucid Motors boasts an aerodynamic shape that is functional and fashionable, two things that are very important for cars. It is spacious and upscale cabin is covered by a glassy canopy that should help it live up to its atmospheric name. I, I'm sorry, atmospheric name. I, here's the problem. It's one thing to well, call well, it an atmosphere well, name if the plane, well, if the car, not a plane, the car is going in the atmosphere, but it's a car. Now, as you will see with the interior, there is a lot of glass, which actually looks pretty cool. However, I do have one important thing to point out. As you can see, like many cars, it has a sun visor. The point of a sun visor is, of course, to stop the sun from blinding you in your eyes while you're driving westward during a sunset in LA traffic. But then I found an issue with the photo they provided us. The sun is past the sun visor, blinding the person who's driving the car. So what's the whole point of having a sun visor if it's not going to be usable anyways? Not to mention you can't, like, close the glass. Yeah, there's, Tesla, there's no cover for it. No, because look at Tesla. Tesla, they did the shaded thing, right. at least. At least it shade. This doesn't look like it's shaded. No. Or at least have, like, you know, a button to, like, shade the top part of it, at least. Yeah, this is a bit... Too much. Odd. It's a too much too much of an atmospheric also, experience. Also, the seat shape is just, like, strange, weird. It, it seems like a really big seat, actually. It, it does look comfortable. I must admit, it does look comfortable. The dash is pretty interesting, too, I must admit. I like, I like the floating gauge look. The floating gauge look is really I cool. I think it's pretty cool. Say. And I do like the material they use for the interior. It's not as like, you know, Tesla's, they like use one material. Right, this plastic. Is, they, they, well, <laughs> you got, I mean, We're not got, wrong. But, but look, they've got suede. There's, there's, there's wood, fake wood, but wood, <laughs> right? And then they got some meshy material and they got a different meshy material and some other meshy materials. And that looks like leather or something right there. So they, they've got a nice uh, plethora of interior choices. So really, the most important option you can select on this car is whether or not to get the 21 inch wheels or the standard 19 inch wheels. Now you might say, why is this really an important option? Well, the one thing to remember with electric cars is they are very dependent on their range. Because of course you can't just quickly fill them up with gasoline, you have to wait for them to charge. And of hours. course- Hours and hours of charging. Many hours, usually about eight hours if it's a slow charger. Because mm -hmm. even though you have these fast chargers that can do it under an hour, they're not that common. Especially if you're going on a road trip to the middle of nowhere. You will not find a Tesla charger. Especially because this isn't a Tesla. Now, if you get the 21 inch wheels, which look exactly the same as the 19 inch wheels, there is one issue. It cuts down your MPGE, whatever that means, by 10. On top of that, you lose 47 miles of range. Yeah, 47 is a lot when you think about it. I know. So now it's time to grab a couple graham crackers and a mug of milk from the coffee shop on the corner of Discussion Drive. So today's car for Discussion Drive is a C8 Corvette Z06. So Chevrolet has released a brand new Corvette Z06, which is pronounced Z06, but it's actually spelled Z06, which is interesting. In interesting information. Yeah. In case you wanted to know or didn't want to know, but mm -hmm. now you know. Now you know. The car comes with a five and a half liter flat plane crank, naturally aspirated V8 engine that produces 670 horsepower, which means it'll probably sound like a Ferrari 458 with a high revving engine, which for a Corvette, you don't expect a high revving V8. That's something you would see more of out of a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Hence a Ferrari 458, which is a Ferrari. Which is really nice because nowadays, basically all expensive fast cars are turbocharged these days. And on top of that, as the starting price being $90,000, considering it's a Corvette, you compare that to the quarter million dollar Lamborghini, I think we're okay. My only problem with this car is the interior. Now, I actually think the C8 has a lovely interior, design-wise. My only issue is the options equipped on this one. As you can see, you got the bucket seats, all the fancy little gadgets, and like weird Corvette features that no one really uses. But take a look at how much carbon fiber there is. That's kind of a problem with this car. It is a black interior with white stitching, 
with gray carbon fiber everywhere. It's a bit bland, yet the interior shape geometrically got, isn't bland. Yeah, the, the, I would have to admit, the design of the interior is really nice. It, it, it gives you that new Corvette stylish feel. But the fact that it is, like you said, very gray, very dark, but I think the design of it, the steering wheel, I think it's pretty nice. There is one big issue with this car. You have to wait a year to get it. So, eh, I don't know, not many people want to wait a year to get a car, but I guess if you want some special car and you fell magically in love with this and you're willing to put 90 some odd thousand dollars into it, this is the car to get. Not to mention 90,000 starting price and dealers are probably marking it up because so many people want this car. Right. So, yeah. Moving on to cars that have just been released, we have the new Subaru WRX. Now, the Subaru has released the WRX featuring a 2.4 liter, which is pretty nice, 2.4 liter engine, right? It all sounds good. Flat four engine producing 271 horsepower and a whopping three horsepower boost from the previous generation car. Now, three horsepower, let me tell you, that's a lot. You're behind mm -hmm. the wheel, you feel that extra three horsepower kick in, it's like, whoa! No. This car also features the ugliest headlights on the new car market. It looks like it's gonna eat you. It's like one of those animals that's like about to like you know, eat you alive. Yeah, it's, or like, it's like it's scrunching your face, like I'm coming for you. Yeah, like, I mean the weird. side of the car. I gotta admit, I, I like the wheel arch thing they did. They try to accentuate that, but the front, I've, I, I never really liked the open hood scoops. But I think I think they did an interesting job on it. Yeah, it has the hood scoop to make it look like it's, you know, a proper rally car, which, of course, this is the base road version. It's a version. sedan. <laughs> it is a sedan, after all. Just as much as my Cadillac and the issue is, is a sports car. And the issue with this hood scoop is it is actually a functional hood scoop, but in order to make it functional... Which is nice, because a lot of cars, companies these days, they make scoops and they do, like, flares on this, that, which aren't functional. At least this is benefit of the doubt. It's it functional. is functional, but in return, you have to have a bunch of delete plates behind your front grill. Right. Which makes you wonder, like, why it's so big. For example... This grill bit above the fog lights, there's actually nothing there. Why didn't they just make the fog lights bigger? They could have. And especially, like, it's a rally car, right? You need lights if right. you're driving at night. But, no. Moving into the rear end, it's actually not terrible, like yeah. the front end. Um, my only issue with the taillights is it looked like it's been chopped off. Which is yeah. a shame, because the actual shape of it is decent. Yeah. It's just chopped off. Talking about a Subaru, you're thinking, you know, middle price range kind of car. It actually got a decent interior. I actually enjoy it. I, I think I think the design of the seats is really cool. They got like bolsters on the sides that look pretty sturdy. Uh, the dash all around, you know, it has got a lot of layers to it. But I think it's it's better than most other you know cars of this price range. But then you focus your vision towards the center of the dash, and it's it's just this another huge screen. I personally don't think there should be these big screens on cars. I understand it's probably cheap. Uh, cheaper to produce them this way instead of having a radio and a, you know air conditioning controls. I just think that's too much, and especially the fact that the speedometer cluster is is in another screen. It's just too much. It's too much. Yeah, like I think at a minimum, you can do screen multiple screens, but like keep the sizes generally nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think at the most it should be the size of two iPhones combined. Yeah, and another thing, that's, that's a weird. They're metric, both showing but, yeah. the GPS. Why is both screens like? Yeah, well, what's the point of the two screens like, if they're showing the same thing? But aside from that. It looks good. Yeah, and the steering wheel actually looks nice. It does. So now it's time for the bidding paddle, which is today a 1961 Chrysler Newport. It's a station wagon, very mid-century modern. It's got finished in a teal blue color, almost like an aqua turquoise, very Palm Springs style car with a white top. Uh, it also has a white interior. This is one of uh, Virgil Exner's uh, va famous forward-looking design cars because he was at Chrysler trying to emphasize the front-end look of, you know, these 50s, 60s ca cars. The car is powered by a 440 cubic inch V8 with a three-speed push-button automatic transmission. For those who don't know what a push-button transmission is, rather than having a regular gear select, which like goes forward or back or up or down, instead you push a button. Almost like on a new Aston Martin, but instead of being electronic, there are actual cables going to the gearbox. Yeah, and it's really cool because you think of the evolution of, of cars. You know, we've always had the gear selector. We've always had the shifter on the floor. And and push buttons, that was another one of those ease of driving things. Nowadays, we've got the little knob. Most cars have a knob or buttons, right? And this is like, you know, you push it, it clunks, you know, and it's really fun, fun to have. This car also has rear-facing seats, which always wins you cool points. Who yeah. doesn't like rear-facing seats? Look at those tail fins. I mean, it's got like the, the, the Bermuda. Muta tail fins. They're like a weird triangle. It's yeah, kind of cool. That sort of reminds me of of the the 59, uh, 58 Edsels with the Bermuda 
tail lights. Those are on the station wagons, which almost are reflective on the ones on this car. But of course, the most important part and the most interesting and enjoyable part of this car is when you open your hood, you're welcomed by a TNT engine. <laughs> doesn't get any better than that, does it? It doesn't get any no, better No, it than doesn't, because if your engine explodes, you know why. You know why. Moving on to upcoming cars, we have the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. So Jeep has released the new Grand Cherokee, which is in addition to the V6 and the V8 models, which are also very nice, uh, you can get a hybrid called the 4XE. Now, based on the photos, um, and also we've actually went to see the car at the LA Auto Show. Although we're not sure if it was the Wagoneer or the Grand Cherokee because they look the exact same. I know. The car may seem quite large, but it also looks very modern, you know, from its every angle. From the side, very large. From the back, very wide. But on the other angles, very modern car. And definitely the top of the line Jeep Grand Cherokee should be considered a luxury car. It's very luxurious for a Jeep. And very expensive. That's why it should be considered a luxury car. Yeah, two yeah. things you need. Yeah. Price, luxury car. Yeah. <laughs> now, the interior here is actually very nice. And as you can see, there's a big screen, but I'm actually not gonna complain about a big screen for once. Wow, aren't we happy? It blends in with the dash. You gotta admit, it, they, they made it flow. They got, look at the little liney bit. It continues yeah, the it stitching. Does. They got the stitching. They up, actually thought and of then it. The, and this comes down and this like a little chrome bitty thingy here. They actually thought of it. I, so I think for once, this is a big screen that works. Great job, Jeep. You actually did a proper screen. And like any FCA or now Stellantis vehicle, the weird transmission dial continues. Now it's time to turn up the broiler and roast some of those graham crackers. We all know that the Toyota Tundra will be a good car for many people, but they decided to forget about the looks this year. It's huge. So starting with the front end, I mean, it's huge. I mean, you've seen previous years where they got, you know, you know, that much, that much, and they got a little bigger. Now it's, now it's engulfing the entire front of the car. It, it, it doesn't match, it doesn't match, it doesn't match at all. The headlights look like a broken waterfall. Now I know what you're thinking, you can't really break a waterfall, but that's what this looks like. And not to mention the odd headlight vent. Like, why do you need a vent going to the headlights? I know, they should have just, you know, like for the Ford F-150s now, they have like the big headlights, which yeah. I think are pretty cool because they're bright on the road. I mean, they do blind you a bit, but you know, they, they look cool. They thought of that. This is like, this is the headlight and then chopped it in half and put a vent in the middle of it. With a broken waterfall. Yeah. And where's the bumper? I mean, you're thinking truck, you want like the- I don't think it has you one. Wanna, you want a look of a bumper. It doesn't really have one. Strange. Now the taillights are just odd. It looks like a pair of parallel lines. Like, why? But, yeah, you just like put up pieces of red tape and let's call it taillights. Moving on to the graceful interior. Yes, that's very much sarcasm. Uh, the interior is very um, reflective of the outside of the car because it's terrible it's it's that it's not that i think it's just uh, it's too bulky it doesn't i get the truck the masculine truck look and you know i know but but it's it's too uh, <laughs> you know it's like uh, and it's also all over. Once again, there's a big screen. Which is doesn't, I mean, it's taller than the dashboard. Why, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Yeah. And then in case you forgot, it's a Toyota. It says Toyota once. It says Toyota Racing Development, even though it's not a race car, it's a mm -hmm. road car. And it says Toyota again. So it's a Toyota. Yep. Now, they've also released a NASCAR version, which in addition to its fake massive grill and the fake headlights, even has a fake light bar on the grill. Oh my God. Next to the fake headlights. And the fake orange running lights on the top of that too. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice that. And in addition, the actually the real part of the grill is like tiny. It's that little bit down there. I mean, yeah. and then when you see the road version next to the NASCAR version, it looks like a baby cow next to the mother cow. Like, baby cow. <laughs> so if you are into the business of cow farming, presumably you're not Jeremy Clarkson because he doesn't do cows. This is the car for you. All right, so there you go. That was episode seven of the Spoken Wheel Show. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, we're done.